So, <sighs> hey Dimitri, how are you? I am doing great. You're doing great? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a wonderful day in Kiev, by the way, you're doing it's great. It's fucking hot outside. Yeah. But, I'm doing great, because the long-awaited uh, night visions and thermals are finally arriving. You got night visions? Yeah. You got them. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the stuff donated by Brandon, I think it's around. Uh, 15k of uh, donated money you sent to him, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a close step to victory. So the guys on the front line can drive in the night, can fight in the night, can shoot in the night. Uh, Random name it uh, preventive medicine. <laughs> oh yeah, the preventive Peter medicine. <laughs> yeah, the Peter <laughs> medicine. And um, yeah, it's all all of your donations. Um, it's his work during the last months. And uh, come closer, have a close look on the stuff he's donating. It's uh, the first five we're delivering uh, today. A second one is waiting at the border together with uh, five further thermals. And uh, as I know, more are coming with postal service. And uh, for sure, as always, he's working on more and more to bring the victory closer. So, Brandon, thanks for your help. Thanks for your work in Ukraine. Let's go on. A little bit on what's gonna happen with these little bad boys. Um, uh, right now, some armed escort is gonna come pick me up and we're gonna safely transport these to a secure temporary storage location. And when Brandon gives us further instructions, these little bad boys will be delivered to the front lines to the boys who, who, who are in need of, of night vision. So, Brandon, thanks for your help, for all your trust. Dimitri, thanks for taking care of them. Pleasure to find you. It was a pleasure you. to meet you here, <laughs> and see you soon. So that's Mass Dick Oost. <laughs> How do you say that? Massive Dick Oost. Massive Dick Oost. Yeah. Is, that, is that really the no. name? Massive Dick Oost? No, it's not. No, it's not. How do you say it? Mass Laos. Mass Laos. Mass Laos. Well, uh, Look at that. Mass Land. Should change it to Massa Land. All right, let's go and meet Svetlana. Hmm. Looks like we got someone else here as well. So this is where it all happened. Hi. 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 Yeah. This come back to you, or that's from tests? It's from tests. Okay. From, uh, Minister of Defense of Ukraine. What? Oh, you sent it, it to... It was tested in the laboratory of Minister of Defense. Okay. Hey. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you in person, finally. And uh, the star of the show is the beautiful Dima. <laughs> uh, he's a volunteer. Uh, he's come here to MSS Defense as well. He's helping Ukraine. Um, the reason I came here today, everybody who's donated and supported, uh, I've often said... I believe I have a responsibility to you, like shareholders. So I wanted to make a video to show the business that we've been doing, where your money goes. Uh, Svetlana, would you please tell everybody what we have purchased so far from MSS Defense? Yes, um, uh, so far, um, Brandon and his team uh, uh, purchased uh, uh, nine pieces of night vision goggles, uh, PVS-14 from JCI. Nine night vision. 27 pieces of thermal imaging devices from IGM. For now, it's only one laser range finder for Vortex, but it's gonna be more. Uh, and uh, yes, that's what we are, uh, have been doing together for two months, I think. Maybe it is a bit more. I was, uh, I was very grateful. Um, this is a business, you work for this business, but it's, it's not easy uh, to make purchases such as this in Europe. Even in America, uh, there's there's regulations. Companies, uh, MSS Defense has military contracts. You supply uh, various militaries, but individuals, uh, it's it's not easy for an individual to come upon uh, a supplier, a constant supplier. Uh, ma many Ukrainians, maybe Dmitry, you could explain. You are also buying, and you collected uh, to buy thermoscopes. Yeah, with your organization, yes. We've collected quite a lot of 
um, mill spec supplies over the past 15 months, all I would say. So yes. It's actually great to meet you. <laughs> it's uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, too. I've heard, I've heard really, um, she was jabbing my ears of, about you for last week a bit or so, about Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. And I didn't even realize you are the guy behind the videos because I, I don't pay attention to details. Our main driver is to help Ukraine, the same as yours. Tell me what you do though. Uh, what beside ambulances, things you have been doing, like business with the MSS? Yeah, from, from actually, uh, it, it, it's quite plain and simple. Um, the war struck, um, my network connections showed me uh, the guidance and the way towards MSS. I, I think I was here in March 2022 already. And we started to cooperate with, and before you joined, I think, before even you joined. I joined in April. But, yeah. Uh, so we started cooperating and it became a massive lavine of supplies we tried to get across the border to Ukraine to assist Ukrainian soldiers and homeland defenders. So it, it has been radios, night visions, thermal scopes, uh, ballistic protection, vests, plate carriers, anything what you can imagine. Yes. IFAX, obviously. So we try to serve as good as possible and we try to be that permanent supply line, but also we serve individual mothers. If people call us for one helmet, we don't turn away. So there's a lot of this. Yeah. Um, where, where do you come from originally? I'm from Odessa. So Hey, Andre, a lot of people know my friend Andre. He's a rotor commander from 28 brigade, yeah. all the Odessa boys. Yeah. Uh, how long have you lived in Netherlands? I lived in Netherlands from 1992 actually, so I built up the bigger chunk of my life in the Netherlands. Uh, served in Dutch Navy for 12 years. Yeah. But um, I felt really compelled to do something. And um, it, it's not even my Ukrainian past or my military background. I just, as a human being, I have righteous feeling uh, of doing something right. So that, that was the main driver. Were you volunteering uh, with the Donbass war before full-scale invasion? No, not, not really volunteering in the sense of um, contribution or doing things proactively. Maybe um, Monobank, you helped with Monobanks yeah, before? Yeah, we've, we've helped with supplies of, of the soldiers, but not, not an active driving in Ukraine in that part. Uh, as for many uh, at that stage, it was a localized conflict. So yeah, we've we've done we've done our best to supply and to support, but the the really active step I took from February twenty twenty two, by driving uh, and myself and and with organization bringing ambulances to Ukraine, we ticked two weeks ago about one hundred fifty, the last numbers. So we were bringing more on Saturday, yes. Yeah, we'll bring another convoy of ambulances to Ukraine again. A and neo neonatal ambulance, a special a specialist. Yeah, we brought. I brought one uh, hand delivered it three weeks ago in Kiev uh, to uh, Institute of Pediatry, and mm -hmm. we hand delivered beautiful neonatal ambulance, fully equipped. So uh, everything counts, you know. We we help to save human lives. We help the newborn lives, but we also don't forget about the dogs and the pets and all other left behind. Would you uh, be open to, I understand you're bringing six ambulances, the other drivers are Dutch. Yeah. They're, they're volunteers coming Major to drive. Majority, uh, majority of them are Dutch and there are also among some Ukrainians and other nationalities we have. Yeah. We Good have bloke uh, from United States who've been driving with us, he's just on his way back. So he, he also makes a lot of nice commentaries and uh, nice, uh, I would say, short movies about his, his reality in Ukraine. So. Tell me, uh, I, will put, I will put the links to your social media where people can contact afterwards. Um, but if people want to give you support, if they want to give you supplies or money, uh, uh, maybe you would even be open to some responsible and sensible people who who would like to help drive a vehicle sometime yeah definitely there's um you can register yourself as a driver on the website or through the social media and it, 
help out anyway so that's every bit of help counts and it's I would say from my own foundation, it's the foundation working for the ambulances, but uh, I also a private initiative uh, to bring help and assistance to rehabilitation centers and to help wounded soldiers with medical supplies, wheelchairs, whatever. We call it the peace for peace. So that it, counts. It, how long is the turnover from here? It's about one week, isn't it? Yeah, depend, depends back. depends where you drive. Uh, we try to compress it in, in limited time. So we have two drivers driving towards border and then the last driver takes it across the border. Mostly we hand it over to local volunteers, but more and more people uh, are able to drive who have the time, definitely, because it takes you about a week at least to, uh, to get back if you're driving anywhere in Ukraine. Even just to Lviv, that's yeah. a week of your time. Boom. Yeah. But some people are going further, they're going to Kiev, they're going yep. to Odessa, Kharkiv, Kharkiv, Dnipro, Donbass, Donbass. Don yeah. Um, no, I, I want to thank you for that. Uh, I, I think that's really cool that we meet today. Everything's happening the way it should. Um, There's always a reason for something. Always no. a reason. Uh, I have some questions for you, Svetlana, but I just wanted to, to explain to some people while we have thermal scopes here. And uh, I haven't asked you this yet. Um, anyone who knows Maxim uh, from my YouTube, uh, we purchased two days, ago, three, four days ago. Yeah, three days ago, yes. Uh, purchased a 50 millimeter thermal scope for Maxim, which is yet to arrive. Uh, this is a special scope for a special person. Uh, he also requested a laser range finder. Uh, this is a Vortex for 500 euros. This is here now. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Dimitri, because you're going on Saturday with the ambulances. Would you be willing to Nova post this from the Ukraine side? Yeah, definitely. No problems. So this is for Maxine. It has a home. It has a friend that I trust. I don't give things to people I don't know. Uh, and I cannot give to people I don't know because I do not have enough to give to the people I know. Uh, this is... This is how volunteers work in Ukraine. Generally, they help the brigades they know, the people yeah. they know. Um, this is for Maxine, but he'll get it this much sooner. I really appreciate if you would take this. No props. We've just actually, uh, for you, we've just assisted Ukrainian homeland defender who was here um, because of his amputation. He's, yes. He stepped on a mine near Marinka, or actually in Marinka in August. He came here in hope to get his feet reconstructed, yes. but eventually they chopped off his uh, right leg off under the knee and we assisted him in coming back to Ukraine. So he finally reached Ukraine. He made it home. He made it home uh, two days ago. He crossed the border. I was helping him with the stuff and assisting him towards the border. And um, he's actually now in Odessa. So I know, but the biggest wish that he had you know what it was? What? To return back to the front line. To do something. Yeah. So, um, yeah, everything has, has a place and a time and a home. So I'll definitely take this for you along and uh, make sure that it arrives safely. We have a doctor in my battalion who, um, when the Kraken bus, Hospitalieri, has a, has a special transport bus to do long-term critical care transports. Um, we we lost one of our battalion members, a doctor named Austria, code name, and uh, D Dima, who was in that accident, now has an artificial hand. He has returned to duty. He has a doctor on that bus. So this this these things are happening every day. Um, many Ukrainian warriors who are wounded, uh, who have to go through rehabilitation, I know they are being helped here in the Netherlands. Uh, in America, in Sweden, in the UK. Uh, many boys who were wounded in Afghanistan go to Headley Court in Surrey. And this is one of the most advanced prosthetic uh, fitting facilities in the world. Uh, so when, when people talk about their tax money or whatever going to Ukraine war effort, it's also through the medical system as well. A lot of people don't know about this, that the boys are coming here and, and women uh, for many months at a time that they would have the best chance. Uh, I want to talk about the thermals while I'm here. Uh, many people who follow understand. 
This is a special tool, a special request for Maxime and his 50 millimeter uh, scope will arrive soon. This is not, um, this is a 25 millimeter uh, T25 uh, AGM thermal scope. This is a 19 millimeter. You see the difference in the lens sizes. Quite often, uh, people who follow my social media, some people think I have, I don't respect Kraken. I don't respect SSO. Uh, this is not the case. Uh, the units that make the best social media get the best funding, but it doesn't mean that people from 28 Brigade, 46 Brigade, people from 35, 36, 95 Brigade are not doing shit. Sorry. Every, 93, 79. Every day. We can name every day. But 93 Long Brigade, days. and I know them. I, I spent five months in Solidar. I know 93 Brigade. Everyone on the internet says 93 Brigade is amazing, and they are. But you heard that on the internet. Uh, there's brigades that have no social media or little social media, or they don't have a foreigner like me or, or a high-profile soldier like Yankee or Roman Trokomits. This is how the war is working. You're seeing the, you're seeing the faces. Um, many of these brigades don't have stuff like this because they don't have volunteers who... There's not enough. Uh, these are not 35 millimeter for marksmen. These are not 50 millimeter for Kraken special. They have equipment almost as good as Americans. My goal is to make, take as many 19 and 25 millimeter thermoscopes and to equip them into normal brigades, normal trenches, we call them blandage. All the ground that you see on the maps, if you follow deep state, it's what happens at night. And as Andre said himself in 28 Brigade, since Kherson, the only ground they are losing in their trenches is when they run out of ammo, men firing into the dark. These are not for snipers. These are not for marksmen. These are for AK-74 rifles. I am buying these and I'm trying to equip as many soldiers in one company as possible. My objective, if we're successful, that hopefully individuals, uh, powerful individuals, organizations who might be silent, maybe even governments, might consider supporting regular brigades with thermal scopes. Dare I say, how many of these can you buy for one Heimar? I'm not a I'm not a commander. I am not Zaluzhny. I am not General Van Hodges, but all I can do is provide information, and they assess it. That's what's called intelligence. That's my objective. Uh, from everything I have experienced, uh, I believe we will be very successful. Um, if you want our ground in Ukraine, I can tell you our policy is not to take ground; it's to kill as many enemy as possible. And Zaso is doing this very well and it, it happens at night. This is why I want to buy small thermal scopes. Uh, this is the platform I'm fundraising on now. Uh, anybody who follows me knows this now uh, for months, many months. Um, here uh, we have 10 19 millimeter that I recently purchased. Uh, they're not delivered yet, uh, 8 25 millimeter. Are delivered already? They're here now. No. Oh, they delivered previously? Yes. And the new aid is going to be this week. So in two days, uh, we will receive it. It's already on the way from my gym. Thing, things are coming. Things are going. Uh, they come to Ukraine by people I trust. Uh, these scopes will not see Donbass without me. I am going to train in Texas. Uh, this is for 762. This is a laser bore sighter. Very simple. We'll go into the bore of the rifle with iron sight adjusters on the forward ranges where you've seen us teaching tactical medicine. If I was to do nothing less for the war, but just to sight rifles, sight rifles, to teach them how to use a laser bore sighter when they go out, this would be something. But to buy all these things, to train the soldiers how to use these, to, to, to show them the value of it, uh, there's people who've never used this before in their life. We don't want $10,000, $20,000 super special forces, underwater knife fighter equipment uh, for the Delta Force uh, Navy SEALs. We want things for Ukrainian farmers, for U Ukrainian chino montage, guys who used to do tire mounting, mechanics. They're now soldiers. They've never had this before. What can they do with this? 
Ukrainian soldiers have one advantage over all NATO soldiers uh, that I have found. They didn't have two years training. Nobody told them what they couldn't do. And they're doing it. Um, I think I've made my point. Um, Svetlana, how, what did you do? You come from Irpin, yes? Yes, um, I was uh, relocated uh, from Ukraine, from Irpin. Uh, I arrived uh, to the Netherlands in March 2022. Uh, I didn't have any intention to leave the country, but uh, Irpin was uh, heavily occupied during the first months, and uh, I was very much lucky to leave the city very much in time, because in two days after I left the city, uh, Russians made a kind of base uh, in uh, my residential house when my apartment is enclosed. So I, I understand that with my uh, family military background, uh, they would not allow me to go alive. Um, uh, yeah, so I was very much lucky. I, I crossed the border with my friends and then didn't have any other plans than just to go out and to see what, what happens. So, um, my initial plans were to go were to go to the United States, uh, but afterwards I appeared in the Netherlands. A by the coincidence, I met uh, Dirk, uh, the director of MSS Defense, uh, which has got a client as a by the coincidence, and um, uh, he offered me this job because uh, I told him uh, my story that I have a uh, military family. My father is a former colonel. Now he is um, preparing suppers. He's responsible for humanitarian demining of liberating areas in Ukrabarona Service uh, State uh, Enterprise. Uh, they have a subvision um, uh, humanitarian demining center. So my father is responsible for uh, cleaning our lands from uh, mines and explosive things. Uh, my brother works for government. My nephew is in the special forces uh, in Donbass area. So I. I'm very much aware of these um, military things and I decided to learn and to help Ukraine uh, because now I can be useful and can do a lot for my country and soldiers and for my family particularly. That's why I'm here. Uh, so there is no coincidence in life. Uh, no. So some, something just uh, led me to the Netherlands and to MSS Defense and I'm very happy that I can assist and uh, I'm very proud of my uh, work. Um, that's my story. The expert on night vision and thermal scopes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But you were not this before February 24th. What did you do? No. Um, uh, before, uh, I, I still work for a Nico group of companies. This is Ukrainian automobile holding, uh, a Ukrainian company. We have a dealers uh, throughout Ukraine. Uh, we sell cars, different brands. And um, I love uh, this company very much. Actually, the president of the Nico group of company, he um, uh, support uh, army very much. He started to do it in 2014. We have our foundation, which also buy a lot of uh, buy and bought a lot of things for Ukrainian army and a lot of medical equipment. And my boss, he gave all his car he had in the beginning, uh, new cars and um, other cars we had in the company just to the soldiers in the first days of war. So. I have been working for this company for 18 years um, and uh, now they understand that I'm here and doing a lot of um, very useful work. So, yeah, <laughs> they support me um, and uh, yes, I am um, I I'm a little bit shy. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't uh, know this. Uh, so what your father does and you have met Harley. You, he, yeah. can, he come, everyone knows Harley. You know where Harley is now. Uh, he is studying uh, EOD uh, course in mm -hmm. in Kosovo, mm -hmm. and many Ukrainians are being sent to Kosovo uh, to do the training for humanitarian EOD. Mm. Yeah, that's where that's what my father does, and he prepares suppers. It's a very difficult course. So not not everyone can be a supper, so it's a psychological uh, conditions and physical conditions, how you work uh, and. Uh, my father and told me that there are many people who just lost their uh, jobs due to the economical situation in Ukraine. And uh, those guys who are not in the field, uh, they came to Ukrainian service yes. to, to study this, to learn how to be a sapper and to clean uh, our lands. Yeah, it's... we will need them for another 100 years. Yeah. yeah, most probably. I think we had Cambodia, who was the, the most mined country before Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Kiev and friends of mine said just out suburbs in the village where they live don't even think of going on a forest trail without 
seeing or being sure that it's demined and then it's not even certain that it's it's already done one of my best friends harley who brings the radios from england who's come to mss we're all uh ukraine is one big village yes yeah. that's right <laughs> um and that's remarkable because um as you rightly mentioned in in yeah when you said totally unknown people i would never considered doing it before but now i would trust some people in my life it's uh, it's going like this um i just uh, in closing um at the beginning of the war everybody wanted to help ukraine 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 slava ukraine uh then a few months into the war johnny depp got divorced and uh many people were not interested in us anymore uh, and i understand you know people have families they have children they live all around the world it's also it's very hard to balance all this it's also very hard to balance ukraine and keeping up with the kardashians i i understand this not really but i accept it in principle um, but the reality is for people who volunteer online the people who donate to us every month the longer this goes please got it in but we're getting better and better. The things we did not know as volunteers at the beginning, the friends we have, even even if we have more or less, we are doing much better than we did one six months ago, one year yeah, ago. That's for sure. You know, one thing, Slava Ukraini sounds well and it flies, but there's also a meaning behind it. And to me, it, if not us, who else? because the heroes cannot do it anymore yeah. so there is us i just thank want to you. thank you thank you very much for today most welcome and we are also we would like to thank you because uh, actually you are not ukrainian by origin but you are totally ukrainian in your soul and we are very thankful that you take your time take everything you have and spend a lot of time in protecting our country and supporting our soldiers and our families uh, actually i love your country <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks a lot, mate. Razom do peramoy. Slava Ukraini. Hara in Slava. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Well, Seth. Well, Brendan. You've been my chauffeur. You've you fed me uh, Dutch sushi, fish and chips. Yeah, you paid for dinner last night. You took me to do that beautiful podcast with Mark and to meet Svetlana today. Um, and you sent us some pretty cool life hacks. I hope you can use them all. Uh, have I been in the Netherlands 24 hours? Would it would probably be, it won't be 30 hours no, by the time I'm out of 24. here. 24. 24 yeah. hours. Thanks, brother. It's been lovely, mate. It's been lovely. Can I stroke the beard? Only very special people can. <laughs> I could never achieve that type of growth. Take care, mate. Danke. I should leave. I should leave. So there you go. One of my first friends I ever met on Instagram. Zapari Show Blast. And um, he's been sending eye facts. He helps Andre, he helps me. Uh, he knows Enrico now. And I just spent 26 hours. Real cool guy.